Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at the MEMS microphone. Now, MEMS is an acronym. It stands for Micro Electromechanical System. And this is a little microphone here on this little breakout board. You can see the module with the little hole in it. That's where the inlet port is for the sound to enter. Now, I've talked about carbon microphones, which contain carbon granules, which are compressed with a sound pressure and change resistance to give us an audio output. And there's the dyma dynamic microphone, like the Shure 561. It's a moving coil microphone. Then there's the electric microphone, which has a permanently charged uh, capacitor, and the sound pressure will give us an output, an audio output. And then there's the condenser microphone, which you see in music recordings, which have a phantom voltage applied from the mixing board. So we're going to have a look at this one. This is a new kit on the block. This is the MEMS microphone and has the same technology as an accelerometer. So in this video we're going to hook it up to a little amplifier and we're going to see the, the output of this little MEMS microphone. Okay here's the internal workings of the MEMS microphone. And you see in the bottom there's a sound inlet. That's the hole in the module where the sound pressure will enter. It will enter into the small front chamber. Now inside this chamber there's a flexible membrane and that will flex with the sound pressure. Now above the membrane there's a fixed screen and the capacitance between the flexing membrane and the fixed screen will change with the sound pressure. Now this changing capacitance will be sent into the ASIC which is some uh, electronics inside the microphone and that will change the changing capacitance into an audio output. Okay there are two types of MEMS microphones. There's the analog output and there's a the digital output microphone. So we're going to be using the analog output MEMS microphone. It's the simplest to implement. You don't need a microcontroller to extract the audio signal out of the microphone. Okay, here's a block diagram of a digital output MEMS microphone. So you can see it needs a clock and data lines hooked up to the microcontroller. And the output of this MEMS microphone is PDM, Pulse Density Modulation, which is very similar to PWM. Okay, here's a second type of digital MEMS microphone, which has to be hooked up to a microcontroller with a serial data clock line. And the output of this MEMS microphone is the I squared S protocol, which has the voice information. Okay, so this is my SPW2430 MEMS microphone on my breakout board. Now this microphone runs on 3.3 volts, but we have an onboard regulator, which you can see here, so we can run the, the breakout board with 5 volts. So we can input 5 volts to the very first pin, it's labeled VN. Second pin is 3.3 volts, that's the output of the regulator. Uh, third pin is ground, and we have two audio outputs. One's labeled AC, second one's labeled DC. AC is AC coupled, so there's an onboard capacitor, so it's capacity coupled to this pin. And the, sec and the DC output uh, is direct coupled, so there's a, there's a DC bias on the output. So we need our own external capacitor, which I have here. And I have it connected up to my little op amp amplifier. So we can now amplify the output of this microphone to a usable level. Okay, I have a scope hooked up to the output of my little op-amp amplifier circuit, which is connected to my MEMS microphone. So I'll give it some audio tests. I'll give it a whistle. And there's our signature on the scope. I'll give a, a single clap. I'll do a double clap. I'll snap my finger. And I'll do a double snap. So there's the signatures on my scope. Okay, here's my full circuit. I have an Arduino Nano, which is connected to my computer through the USB port. Now my Nano is powering my analog MEMS microphone with 5 volts. It's also powering my little op-amp circuitry that's amplifying the signal from my MEMS microphone. So I have a little program running on the Nano. It's my little clapper circuit. So if I snap my fingers twice, see my LED comes on, do it again, turns off. Now I can tap on the table, also triggers my little clapper circuit, I do it again. So if I do one clap, or one snap, and then wait over two seconds, it doesn't respond. It has to be the certain cadence of a, of a clap clap or a snap snap to activate my LED. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built in my breadboard. 
And you can see my Nano, it's feeding 5 volts to power my op-amp circuitry, my TLC272. It's also feeding 5 volts to my MEMS module, my SPW2430. Now I have a voltage divider of two resistors, two 22K resistors, which is cutting down the VCC, the 5 volts, to 2.5 volts, which is fed into pin 3. Now that 2.5 volts will also appear on pin 1, so when I whistle or talk into the microphone, pin 1 will vary above and below half VCC, or 2.5 volts, and we'll get our output, our sine wave output. Now the, the gain of this amplifier is about 80, using the 220K ohm resistor and a 2.7K ohm resistor. Now to get more gain out of the circuit, you could actually add another stage, because there's actually two op amps in the TLC272 package. Now for my clap clap circuitry, I changed this resistor here to 82K, so that's going to increase the voltage uh, output of the divider to about 4 volts at pin 3. So now we're going to get 4 volts DC in pin 1, and that 4 volts is fed into D2 of the nano. So that's a GPIO digital input. So now we have 4 volts at D2, and that's a logical one. So now every time I clap or snap my fingers, we're going to get a negative going pulse into D2. And if it's the right cadence, the nano will pick it up and toggle the LED. Okay, here's the code running on my Nano for my clapper function to toggle my LED. It's pretty simple. Now it's written in fourth, it's written in flash fourth, and the program is called clapper, so here's my whole program. So the first thing it does, it configures pin 5 as an output pin, which is connected to the LED. Then it goes into a begin, a gain loop, so this is a continuous loop. So the first thing it's looking for is the first clap, so clap number one question mark. So clap number one question mark is a begin until loop. So this is looping until pin two goes low, indicating a clap. Then it'll jump out of this loop and it's detected the clap number one. Then it's gonna delay 60 milliseconds waiting for the clap sound to go to zero. Because if you notice on the scope, uh, the clap, the clap uh, is pretty, pretty noisy, the clap signal. So it waits 60 milliseconds and it checks to see if it's quiet just to make sure. So quiet is waiting for pin two to go high. Now when it's quiet, it's going to look for clap number two. Now clap number two, it resets the timer, starts the timer, and it's waiting for pin two to go low again. If pin two goes low, then it's going to toggle pin five, turn on the LED, and then it's going to exit. It's going to jump out of here and then go to 100 milliseconds delay and go back looking for clap one. Now if there is no second clap, this timer will time out greater than one second, that's 1,000 milliseconds, then it knows that it didn't get the second clap, and it won't toggle the LED, and it'll, it'll go back to the beginning looking for the first clap. So this program is running continuously, waiting for the clap-clap cadence to toggle the LED. Okay, here's a digital MEMS microphone on my discovery board. You can see it right here. If you look closely, you can see the sound port hole on the top. Now if you have a cell phone or a laptop, it's going to have one of these digital MEMS microphones in it. Because inside a laptop, you got your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your hard drive, your switching power supply, which is charging the batteries. And they're all putting out electromagnetic interference, which could interfere with the audio signal of the microphone. But since it's a digital output, you have a clock line and a data line going from your microphone to your sound card. So it's immune to all this interference. So that's why they're using these digital MEMS microphones um, in the laptops. So it makes it a lot easier for the engineers to design a quiet uh, microphone. So, so all you have to do now is get one of these little modules. They're, they're pretty inexpensive. I think I got this one for about $8. And you could, you could uh, hook it up with a little amplifier and a scope and you could play around with a MEMS microphone.